Um, let me go through this regression and try and explain uh, what happens when you use a, a dummy variable. In this case, we call it large school, uh, the school with teachers greater than 300. Now, we also have a student-teacher ratio and English language uh, percent, uh, the school with the percentage people who have English as second language. And the regression output is on this slide. And um, now, how do we interpret this output? All right. And basically, uh, what we see, the, the coefficient for the student-teacher ratio uh, went down from what we had before when by itself is minus 2 point something. Now it becomes minus 1.28. Uh, what that means is that uh, for uh, whether it's large school or small school, uh, whatever percentage the English language proficiency you have, fix those two uh, at the current level, whatever the level is. For each additional student that teacher has to teach, on average, the test score goes down by 1.28. All right. So uh, similarly, for the coefficient for English language proficiency, just says that holding the student-teacher ratio at whatever the level is for every given level, and whether it's large school or small school, don't change those. Now, if we only change the English language percentage for each point increase, then the test score on average goes down by uh, 0.67, all right? So this, the, the, the point of multiple regression is to hold other variables fixed, not changing, and see when you change only one of them, what's the impact on the dependent variable, all right? So the large school coefficient is interesting. Remember in the past, when we have the coefficient for large school, the test score actually is negative. But here, when we fix the student-teacher ratio, fix the English language percentage, then we find that the larger school on average has about close to five points extra than the school that's smaller. And it's very interesting. That's the point of holding other things the same.